Welcome to the first in the series that I'm going to call, So Here's the Thing. Oh, today, because of recent experience, I'd like to go over, here's the thing about short sales. So, what's the thing about short sales? Short sales in the year 2017 are not anything like short sales in the year 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. Short sales today are different. Gone are the days where we have to fax 72 pages 100 times to a lender. Gone are the days where it takes six months to a year for a short sale approval. I'll tell you what my most recent experience has been. We've just completed um, one of two short sales that we had the listings on for the year. We are working with an attorney's office who's doing the negotiations for the sellers. And I'm in constant contact with that attorney's office. Uh, so in both cases, on these two contracts, they were both approved, one in 58 days and one in 60 days. Um, the one of them took hmm, the second lender 90 days to get um, approval to us and here's the way that a short sale goes a lot of people um, don't understand what a short sale is so I'm going to start from top to bottom a short sale is when a seller uh, or owner of a property is what they call upside down in their mortgage and that means that they owe more than their home is worth. So they are short of the amount owed on their mortgage or mortgages. So what do you do if you're a buyer and it says short sale on the listing? Number one, make sure that you have an agent who knows what a short sale is and who has experience with short sales. And if you don't, ask them if they're associated with anyone who does have this experience because it's critical both on the buy and the sell side. So I'm going to go through the list of things very quickly of what you need to do on the sell side, on the buy side. On the sell side, um, you, we do advise in this day and age to get the advice of an attorney um, and if your realtor doesn't work with an attorney then they should be associated with a title company in the state of Florida that's um, close that does a lot of short sales that has a designated person who negotiates the short sales because they know all the ins and outs and any changes that might be going on with the lenders and they have relationships with the lenders our business is all about relationships and short sales are no different than anything else in our business you got to make sure that these negotiators know how to negotiate a short sale and have relationships with the banks uh, so here's the way as a buyer a short sale goes down number one you submit an offer that offer that you're submitting that um, you, you also have to submit a short sale addendum in the state of Florida to, that is supersedes anything in the contract so you need to understand that right off so read it's a we use the uh, the far bar as is and we use the short sale addendum that goes along with the far bar as is read that document number one on that short sale addendum is critical because number one explains to you in very explicit terms that anything that happens with this short sale pretty much has nothing to do with the brokers or the sellers. It is the lender who's going to determine, number one, the price, number two, when you close, and number three, the terms of the contract. So while you and your seller might have signed a contract that, uh, as a buyer, you might have signed a contract that says, seller, I want you to give me uh, a home warranty. And the seller says, okay, I'll give you a home warranty. Well, when the approval letter comes from the lender and the lender says, uh-uh, no home warranty for you, here are the things that we're willing to pay for, and here's the amount that we're willing to accept, and here's the date that we want you to close on. That's it. That's the way it goes. you got to do what the lender says in the short sale um, approval letter. So 
while you may have had an agreement that the seller would buy you a home warranty, the lender has said no. And when the lender says no, then it's not allowable. That means the seller can't buy it for you, period. It can't be on the settlement statement. They, um, another issue that we've run into is, oh, they didn't give me enough time to do my appraisal, to do my, um, to do my, uh, inspections. The inspection period we agreed to on the contract is shorter than the one that the banks are saying now, um, in this particular case, it's a cash transaction. Uh, they're giving us only two weeks or three weeks to close. And you had... Uh, the agreement, the contract said 15 days for inspections. Well, the lender gets to dictate that. If you don't close by the time frame indicated on the approval letter, the approval letter is no more, no longer valid, and they and your the short sale is pretty much denied. So that's on the buy side. On the sell side. We go in, because I specialized in short sales before title companies and attorneys were negotiating them, real estate agents did, and I did a lot of short sales in 2008 and 2009. Um, that was when um, all of the realtors who were on the gravy train from the heyday got off because you really had to work to get a deal done. Um, so there weren't that many agents out there who were specializing in short sales, but if you wanted to do business, you, that's what you did <laughs> and I wanted to do business and all I knew was how to work hard so that's what I did anyway sell I learned from then and it still stands true today the seller has to has to give the lender very specific things most lenders have some lenders have different items than others but pretty standard is your um, the, your hardship letter. The There has to be a hardship and why the seller needs to do a short sale. So the hardship letter is critical. They have to get all of their bank statements and um, monthly bills and uh, everything, all of their financials in order because that's going to be required once an, a, um, excuse me, an offer comes in. And they have to work closely with you. You have to have a willing seller who knows what the situation is, who knows that that the realtor really doesn't have control over it, nor does the negotiator. We just give the lenders what they require. Um, if I've learned one thing, it, it, especially in these past two transactions, the person who's negotiating this is critical. I've worked with two really good, this, this um, individual, who is working on this from the attorney's office and we do have a title company who works some of our short sales too. In this particular case, both of these sellers chose to go through the attorney for various reasons. In any case, short sales are not for the faint of heart. Short sales, Mr. Buyer or Miss Buyer and Mr. Seller and Mrs. Seller, you need to entrust your agent and the negotiator that you're working with, that they're they're working on your behalf. Um, know that this transaction, a short sale, is between the seller and the bank. The buyer can't call the bank. The buyer can't say, I disagree. Here's what I want to offer, even though you say, bank, Mr. Lender, even though a buyer might say, I don't agree with that. That you can't go back and and expect the bank to change their price. They've done an appraisal. <laughs> the appraisal stands from the lender. Um, and, and your out is, it's an as-is contract, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer. You can walk away. The short sale addendum clearly states you can... You, once you get the, the approval letter, you decide, do you want to move forward with this? So let me say one more thing about um, being a buyer on a short sale. The short sale addendum that we use says that you don't have to do um, the only uh, timeline and deadline from the contract that you have to abide by is get the escrow in by the date that you said you were. All other deadlines don't begin until the um, approval letter is received. So that means your, your inspections don't have to be done. Um, 
if there's uh, your application for your loan doesn't have to be done all of those time frames that we track through that have deadlines on the contract they don't kick in on the addendum that we use they don't kick in until uh, until the letter is received however if you don't want to wait 60 days you can pay for the inspection and if it's not what you like you can walk away at that time but no if you don't come to terms with the lender once they approve your short sale and the letter comes out and you've already done your inspections and you've already paid for a roofer to go out and you've already spent some money on this the lenders not going to give you your money back you have the option as a buyer do the inspections before or wait for the letter on the addendum that we use anyway I felt that this was necessary because we've had um, a buyer on a short sale that didn't work out for her because she didn't like the number that the lender came back on and we've had two sellers who we I believe are working toward um, closing on the second one we already closed one this week the other one is supposed to close tomorrow and and we're having difficulty with a buyer who is actually a real estate agent who doesn't know anything about short sales uh, we're having a little difficulty with a buyer not understanding exactly how a short sale transaction goes so I thought hmm I'm just gonna do a video about it so here's the thing if you have questions on a short sale ask your realtor what is the process go to your bank's website and read they all have them they all have a page dedicated to distressed properties and if you um, are going into foreclosure or you need to do a short sale every lender has a page dedicated to this read that and find out from the people who have done this and trust please trust what those people are telling you so here's the thing you can be very successful in selling and purchasing uh, a short sale just ask the right questions and go to the right people that's it have a great day